Welcome to my channel. Today I will tell you the story of William. His wife cheated on him. So, please subscribe to our channel and let's start the story. My wife has been staying out late recently, and when she finally came back one time, I noticed that she had even lost her underwear. My name is William, male, 35 years old. I have been married to my wife Jennifer for 10 years, and we have a son and a daughter. Our family should have been happy and harmonious. But recently, I noticed that my wife likes to go out a lot, especially at night. When I ask her where she's been, she always casually says she was out with her girlfriends. It's been a long time since we had any intimacy, the last time was five months ago. Thinking about this, I sigh every night, feeling suffocated by work pressure. One night, my wife finally came back, usually she doesn't come back until 2 or 3 in the morning, but this time she came back before 10 o'clock. She looked very tired and had drunk quite a bit. Without even taking a shower, she lay down on the bed and soon her breathing was heard next to me. I couldn't resist my desires and moved closer to her, gently stroking her forehead. Honey, can we be intimate? We haven't made love for a long time. My wife didn't answer, she just pushed me away. I couldn't care less and since it was a weekend the next day, I could enjoy a night of passion. Just as I took off my clothes, I suddenly noticed that my wife was wearing a skirt without anything underneath, she had nothing on. I felt surprised and had a bad feeling. Jennifer. Jennifer wake up, where are your underwear, why can't I see them? I questioned her, confused. She impatiently looked at me and continued lying in bed, when I took a taxi back, I had to use the bathroom urgently. I forgot to bring back the dirty underwear, I was very puzzled and half believed her explanation. She spread her legs and impatiently said, if you want it, hurry up, I'm tired. I hesitated for a moment, ultimately resisting my desires and calmly lay down next to her. But lying there, leaning against her, I couldn't help but wonder if she was being unfaithful. I am quite tolerant of my wife's activities. After all, we have been married for 10 years. I hoped that my wife was telling the truth because I loved her and didn't want her to do anything to hurt me. With these thoughts in mind, I closed my eyes and fell asleep. Early the next morning, my wife got up. I was already awake when she got up, but I pretended to continue sleeping with my eyes closed. Honey. Honey? She pushed me. I pretended to be groggy and said, what's wrong? I'm still sleepy. My wife said, I'm going out for drinks with my girlfriends and won't be back for lunch. Also, next month, the kids will be back from their grandparents' house, so be prepared. I gave a simple response, and my wife dressed and left the room. First, I needed to find out what my wife was really doing outside. Secondly, I needed to follow her discreetly after she left. I went to the balcony and saw my wife get into a Range Rover after leaving the apartment. I quickly went down to the garage, got into my Volkswagen, and caught up with her Range Rover before it left the neighborhood. I maintained a safe distance and wasn't noticed. The Range Rover stopped in front of a health club, and after my wife got out of the car, I saw her hugging and being intimate with a strange man. My heart sank, and I felt a sharp pain. I couldn't believe that my loving wife of 10 years was cheating on me. It's heartbreaking to think that my wife betrayed me. I didn't rush into the club to confront the cheating couple, but instead drove home, sat alone in a corner, and smoked a cigarette. Thinking about the past 10 years of marriage, I couldn't understand why she betrayed me. My heart was in pain. After what seemed like a long time, I took a deep breath and made a decision. I decided to get a divorce. However, divorce couldn't be done easily. Nowadays, the marriage law clearly states that divorce requires mutual consent and equal division of assets. If I were to apply for a divorce now, 
my hard-earned savings and the house I had worked so hard to buy would become someone else's achievement. So I decided to implement a plan. I had to find evidence of my wife's infidelity. With evidence, I could use legal means to protect my own interests. I contacted my childhood friend Jim, who had a factory where they assembled commonly used items like cameras. I knew he had the technology for installing mini cameras, so I asked him to help me install one to monitor my wife. When I arrived at his factory, I handed him one of my wife's high heels, which she often wore. I asked him if his technology was reliable and what would happen if the camera was discovered. Jim assured me that it was impossible to detect the camera he would install, as it was so small and well hidden. After installing the camera, I was satisfied with Jim's work. The red high heel showed no signs of a camera, only a tiny black dot that could be seen upon close inspection. I returned home, put the high heel back in the shoe rack, knowing that my wife would wear this favorite pair of high heels when she went out. The next day at noon, I greeted my wife sitting on the sofa watching videos, then drove to work. I spent the afternoon working at my desk and checked the time. It was almost time for my wife to leave. I used my phone to connect to the camera and saw my wife in high heels walking into a club, drinking with several well-dressed men, and then. They began using foul language, and my wife, dressed up and seductive, even danced provocatively in front of these men. She undressed and twisted her buttocks in front of them, some of them even slapping her, making her moan as if in pain or pleasure. This was my wife, and seeing this scene clearly through the camera, I couldn't help but feel angry, hurt, and confused. Why would Jennifer, this woman, treat me like this? What did I do wrong? I couldn't help but smash a nearby teacup, startling the colleague who came in to submit a report. Seeing the revelry scene on my phone, my colleague chuckled and said, Oh, so Mr. Wine, you watch these things in the office, huh? This woman looks good, nice figure too. I looked at him and replied calmly, that's my wife. My colleague was shocked by my words. Collecting evidence, I decided to have a showdown with my wife when I got back home from work. When I got home, she was not there. I sat on the sofa, looking at the wedding photos on the wall and the family photo on the cabinet, feeling a sense of loneliness. Watching the video recorded during the day on my phone, my wife was chatting and laughing with a few bosses, looking flirtatious and debauched, which made me suspect if she had always been this way. As I looked at the family photo with my son and daughter, I started to feel more and more like they were not my biological children, which made me extremely uncomfortable and angry. After waiting for most of the night, my wife finally came back drunk. She looked like she had consumed a lot of alcohol, stumbling as she walked, leaning against the wall as she entered the living room. You're finally back? I looked at her, sounding ominous. My wife, unfazed by my tone, waved her hand, there was traffic, so I came back late. Wait for me to take a shower, and we can do it tonight, she then reached out to open the bathroom door. I stood up and stopped her directly, staring at her, saying, you want to come back and clean up after getting dirty outside? Are you clean after that? My wife looked at me in surprise, raising her voice, do you have a problem? I'm just going to take a shower. Why are you saying all this, let's get a divorce? I said coolly. My wife became very angry, pushing me away, angrily saying, William, are you crazy? Why do you want a divorce? I took out my phone and played the video of her flirting with several bosses in the club, and she immediately froze, staring at me in disbelief. I said calmly, how are you going to explain this now? My wife exclaimed, William, you monitored me, smack. I slapped her across the face, angrily saying, Jennifer, I'll tell you, I monitored you, so what? You betrayed me, I took out the divorce agreement from the drawer and threw it in her face, sign it now. The evidence is in my hands, you cheated first. You won't get a penny of this house or any of my assets, Jennifer was panicking now, completely losing the confidence she had before. 
She knelt on the ground, clinging to my legs, begging, please don't, husband, I don't want to leave you, I love you. Husband, I kicked her away, angrily saying, you still have the face to say you love me? When you were in bed with other men, did you ever say you loved me? Jennifer started crying, tears and snot flowing, saying, you don't understand, husband, don't you know what I've been through all these years? Why don't you ask me why I did this? I sneered. Stop pretending, you cheated. What other reasons do you have? Jennifer shook her head. No, husband, you've misunderstood. Years ago, our daughter Alice had an accident and needed 50,000 for surgery. At that time, you were working overseas and didn't have time to come back. By the time the money arrived, Alice was probably dead, so I. At this, I furrowed my brows, remembering the incident. When I learned that our daughter Alice had been in an accident, I was very worried, but because I was overseas, it took a long time for the money to reach the bank. Was there a secret behind it? Jennifer continued, so I borrowed money from an acquaintance, a boss, to pay for Alice's surgery in time. But later, I found myself fooled. The interest rate, which was supposed to be only 10%, had skyrocketed to 1 million in less than half a year. I couldn't repay it, so. So you sold yourself to pay off the debt? I couldn't believe it. Tears streaming down her face, Jennifer nodded, Yes, husband. I did it for our family. What's wrong with that? I was skeptical until she pulled out a loan agreement from the room. I took the contract and carefully examined it, and indeed, as my wife said, she owed a full one million. Could it be that I had wrongly accused my wife, that she also had her own reasons for doing this, confused and even feeling guilty for my earlier actions? I asked, why didn't you tell me about this? We could have paid it off together. My wife knelt down, crying, the money was borrowed by me alone, I can't do that, if you knew, you would definitely leave me. I shook my head and said, no, I wouldn't leave you, my wife asked, so are you still going to divorce me now, you just said you wouldn't leave me. I sighed and chose to forgive my wife. After all, she was also under pressure, and with our 10 years of marriage, I couldn't bear to let her go. I said, stop crying, get up. My wife stood up, her face still showing the red mark from when I hit her earlier, which made my heart ache. I asked, how much have you paid back now? My wife said, as required, I have already paid back 650000 but the interest is increasing, I need to pay back another 2 million to clear the debt completely, what, you have to pay back 2 million more? I widened my eyes, feeling incredulous. Looking at the contract in my hand, I decisively said, no, we have to report this. You only borrowed 500,000 at first, and now that you have paid it back, you still have to pay back so much, this must be illegal, if we report it, they will not threaten you anymore. My wife grabbed my hand and shook her head, saying, No, husband, the boss said if we dare to report it, they will retaliate, especially against our children. What? They would. Our children were our soft spot, no wonder my wife insisted on repaying the debt with her body alone. Thinking about this, I felt even more guilty towards my wife. My wife suggested, Why don't we go talk to that boss tomorrow? I have gotten to know him better during this time, he should give us some leeway, and if it doesn't work out, we can seek help from the police. I hesitated for a moment, looking at my wife's pleading eyes, thinking that if we reported it rashly, our children might really be in danger. Although my wife and I could handle our own matters, our children were innocent, and I couldn't let them be threatened. I nodded and said, okay, let's go talk to him tomorrow, we can't let you suffer any longer wife. My wife nodded, looking at the video on my phone and asked, can you delete the video on your phone, I don't want to remember this painful memory. In front of my wife, I deleted the video on my phone, and after doing this, my wife seemed to feel a lot more relaxed. The next morning, I woke up early to prepare to talk to the loan shark with my wife. But to my surprise, my wife was already up earlier than me, and when I woke up, she was nowhere to be seen. At this moment, the phone rang, it was my wife calling. 
Hello, husband, are you awake? I'm outside right now, can you come pick me up in the car? Oh, okay. I hung up the phone and without much thought, I drove downstairs to pick up my wife. Following the address my wife gave me, I drove to a crossroads. Just as I was wondering where my wife was, I turned my head and saw a large truck coming straight towards me. Before I could react, despite turning the steering wheel fiercely, the large truck still hit me, my vision rolled, and then my consciousness blurred, and I passed out. When I woke up, I found myself in the hospital. I have a lot of plaster on my body, the doctor said I have multiple fractures all over my body and need to rest, but fortunately my life is saved. After the doctor left, I lay on the bed sighing, wondering how unlucky I am, and why did that big truck driver hit me? At this moment, I saw a familiar figure walking in at the door. It was my wife. Seeing my wife, I quickly asked, How is it, honey, have you settled the loan shark issue? If not, we should report it to the police. Loan shark? My wife showed a mocking expression, shrugged and said, What loan shark? I don't understand what you are talking about. I puzzled, didn't we agree to go talk to the club boss last night? Oh, you mean me? A man in a mink coat walked into the hospital, smirking at me. As soon as he came in, he hugged my wife's waist and even kissed her on the face. Mmm, disgusting. To my shock, my wife not only did not resist, but made a comfortable moan and snuggled in the man's arms. I stared at the man and angrily rebuked, What are you doing, let go of my wife? The man grinned, shook his head, and said, You fool, can't you see if your wife is willing? Even when I betrayed you, you still count money for others. What do you mean, you? What do you mean? I felt uneasy, an unbelievable idea forming in my mind. I looked at my wife and asked, Honey, did you deceive me? My wife nodded and said, Yes, I just lied to you. Did you just realize it? Let me tell you, the big truck that hit you was arranged by me and Sam. I never owed any money in the first place, that loan contract was fake, the purpose was to deceive you. Hearing this, I was shocked, a surge of anger rising in my heart. Jennifer, why, why would you do this to me? I roared aloud. My wife coldly responded, because you are poor, you are humble, you are incompetent. She said, in these ten years, I've had enough of you. If it weren't for your parents' house, do you think I would have married you? More importantly, compared to Sam, your skills in bed are too poor, and your penis is short and small, each time lasting less than ten minutes, you can't satisfy me at all, whoever is with you is unlucky. Sam grabbed my wife's but and laughed cynically, he he, William, do you now understand why your wife betrayed you? We had planned to collaborate, use a fake loan contract to deceive you, didn't expect you actually installed a camera in your wife's shoes. Don't worry, I have a lawyer to help with your divorce, guaranteeing that you will leave with nothing. Oh, by the way, those two children of yours, they are not yours at all. I've known Vivian for ten years. We've had so much fun in your house back then, now looking back it's really exciting. I was shaking with anger, shouted at Sam, you. You two traitors. I almost couldn't catch my breath, I felt a surge of blood in my throat, and spat out a lot of blood. It was anger attacking my heart. When I woke up again, it was seven days later. I received a text message from the bank, saying that my property had been legally transferred to Jennifer. And I lost my job because of this incident. The boss fired me because I hadn't been to work these days. A lawyer walked into the hospital room and said to me, Hello, Mr. William, I am Ms. Jennifer's lawyer. According to the approval, you have divorced Ms. Jennifer and all your properties have voluntarily been transferred to her account. Here is your divorce agreement, what, a divorce agreement? I took the agreement, 
feeling extremely surprised. I asked, isn't divorce supposed to be mutual, and why are all my properties transferred to Jennifer's name? The lawyer adjusted his glasses and pointed to the bottom of the agreement, saying, this is your signature and your fingerprint, clearly stating that you voluntarily transferred the properties to your ex-wife Jennifer. Upon hearing this, I felt a surge of anger. No, this is not possible. They must have pressed my fingerprint while I was unconscious, the lawyer shrugged and said, I can't control that, as it's not my concern. My job is done, so I'll be leaving now. With a cold demeanor, he turned and left, leaving the room quiet. I stared at the agreement, feeling the urge to tear it up, but at that moment the doctor approached and delivered shocking news. Hello, Mr. William, I am the doctor in charge of your surgery. You need to rest well after the surgery, and you also owe us 100,000 yuan for the operation. Please settle it now. What, 100,000 yuan? I was surprised and speechless. With my job and house gone, and now owing the hospital 100,000 yuan, a mountain of pressure weighed heavily on me, making it hard to breathe. Fortunately, I had a little money left in my bank account, but I still owed the hospital 50,000 yuan and was forced to leave. Limping back home with a plaster cast on my leg, I found a seal on the door with the word auction written on it. This Jennifer, she actually sold my house. I gritted my teeth in anger. But what could I do now? My house was gone, and I couldn't afford to sue or fight back. In despair, I arrived at a flyover and looked down at the river, contemplating jumping off. However, fear held me back, and I hesitated for a long time, ultimately unable to take the leap. William, is that you, William? Just as I was about to leave, a voice caught my attention. I turned to see a woman in a black work uniform standing before me. You're Lucy. I recognized her, she was my college classmate and first love. We had lost touch after graduation, and it was unexpected to meet again in such circumstances. As my stomach growled, I suggested, can you treat me to a meal, at the noodle shop nearby, I recounted my story to Lucy. After hearing my ordeal, Lucy expressed sympathy. William, I can't believe you went through all this. Your ex-wife is really heartless to treat you like that, she exclaimed. With a bitter smile, I finished the last bite of noodles and said, I have nothing now, no job, no house. I don't know what to do, after pondering for a moment, Lucy offered, why don't you come work at my company? My dad helped me start a company, and I'm the CEO. I can help you reclaim your house. Thanks to Lucy's assistance, I found a new job. In the following month, I got along well with my colleagues at Lucy's company, and she even gave me an advance on my salary considering my situation. However, the hospital bills continued to weigh on my mind, and the situation with my ex-wife continued to affect me, making me feel gloomy. At a restaurant, Lucy treated the employees to a meal, with me in attendance. Colleagues praised Lucy for her leadership, toasts were made, and soon Lucy was visibly intoxicated, her face flushed. She waved her hand and said, I'm not drinking anymore, I have to go, you guys continue eating. Several colleagues immediately stood up, how about I drive you, CEO? My car is also fine. Lucy shook her head and suddenly pointed to me, saying, William will take me home, you guys continue eating. I was a little surprised, noticing jealous looks from my colleagues towards me. And so, I took Lucy to the parking lot. She held my hand and occasionally rubbed against my arm feeling a soft touch while making me feel a little heated. In the car, I reminded, CEO, my injury has not healed yet, and my legs are not convenient, so driving may be slow. Lucy sat in the passenger seat, leaning on my shoulder, saying, mm, it's okay to drive slowly, we can chat. Also, don't call me CEO in private, it sounds awkward, just call me Lucy, that's what I like to be called by you. 
Touched by her sudden words, I blushed a bit, coughed, and drove away from the parking lot. On the way, we talked a lot. Lucy kept asking if I had missed her in the past 10 years, as she was my first girlfriend. Back at her house, still smelling of alcohol, she suddenly hugged me from behind and whispered in my ear, William, I like you. I hesitated for a moment, turned around, only to find her stripped down to a sexy black lingerie. I swallowed and asked, Lucy, what are you doing? Lucy came in for a kiss, entwining with me, be with me, William, okay? I couldn't resist and, looking at her so close, I let go of my rationality and indulged in desire. An hour later, she lay on my shoulder, saying, Don't worry, William, I have contacted a friend abroad who is a hacker and can recover the data from your phone. Once you have evidence of your ex-wife's affair, the law will not spare her. I was very grateful and looked at Lucy, Thank you so much, Lucy, I don't know how to repay you. Lucy smiled flirtatiously, hugging my neck, saying, Then you can be with me from now on. Okay? My heart pounded, and I nodded, saying okay, a few days later, I received a package downstairs at the company. Opening it, I was delighted to find the phone I had entrusted to Lucy to send to the hacker. I eagerly opened the phone and found that all the deleted videos and pictures had been recovered. Watching the evidence I had recorded of Jennifer's affair, I smirked and vowed to make this woman face the consequences of the law. I told Lucy about this, and she even found me a lawyer. The lawyer said that as long as there is evidence of Jennifer's affair, I can retrieve my property. But instead of rushing to submit the video to the court, I sent it to the family group chat, letting all relatives and friends see what kind of woman Jennifer really was. As expected, the video quickly spread in the group chat, and Jennifer's side of the relatives all knew about the matter. Jennifer, being concerned about losing face, immediately added me back on WeChat and messaged me, William, you didn't delete the video, did you lie to me? I coldly replied, let me tell you, Jennifer, I have already contacted the court to sue you. You cheated first and transferred my property without consent. Wait for the legal judgment. Jennifer panicked and started calling me, but I directly blocked her number making her even more anxious. She sent a WeChat message saying, let's talk things over, William, I can give back your property and give you a lot of money. I asked, really? Jennifer replied, yes, I'm not lying to you, but you have to come in person. Let's settle this privately, and so, according to the address, I came to a coffee shop. Entering the private room, I saw Jennifer sitting alone by the coffee table, staring at me coldly. She had become quite wealthy during this time, dressed in luxury, looking like she was doing well. Sitting in a chair, I asked, how do you want to resolve this? Jennifer took out a bag from under the table, filled with stacks of cash. She said, I admit I cheated first and took your property. I'm sorry to you. Here is one million, take it, and let's call it even. I was tempted and reached for the bag, but Jennifer stopped me. She handed me a contract, saying, this is a confidentiality agreement. Once you sign it, you can't sue me in court. From now on, we owe each other nothing, I chuckled in my heart, surprised that Jennifer could be so foolish. Just after signing the contract, she snatched it back, revealing a smirk of her successful scheme. Without warning, a group of thugs in black clothes burst in and forced me to the ground. I exclaimed, Jennifer, are you playing me? Jennifer smirked and said, yes, I am playing you. Did you really think I would just give you money? Today, you won't be able to leave this place. Kill him, she ordered. I had never imagined she would try to kill me. What a wicked woman. Just as the thugs drew their knives and lunged at me, a group of police officers stormed in and swiftly apprehended Jennifer and her accomplices. Jennifer panicked and pointed at me, shouting, William, you didn't keep the agreement. Unbeknownst to her. 
I had already alerted the police, and I had a pinhole camera installed in my clothes, recording the whole scene. Just having the video of Jennifer's infidelity wouldn't be enough for a legal case, I needed her to confess her crimes personally. Under interrogation with the hard evidence, Jennifer confessed to her crimes, and she was ultimately sentenced to 15 years in prison for attempted murder and extortion. The club owner, Sam, who was also involved, was sentenced as well. My assets were returned to me, and everything ended happily. In the end, I successfully married Lucy, the high-class beauty, and reached the pinnacle of my life.